Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian, and this is the waiver wire video for week 12 of the fantasy hockey season. Week 11 was kind of a disaster. It was supposed to be a two part week, and it ended up being just two days before Christmas and a whole bunch of games canceled. Just really not great. And for anyone who was planning their week out in advance, it didn't work out for you because, well, so many games got canceled that in all likelihood, your plans were foiled, which really sucks because it kind of eliminates a lot of the fun of playing fantasy hockey. Hopefully, though, this coming week is going to be a little bit better. The games were canceled in advance a little bit. So I'm going to roll with what the schedule says this week. And hopefully, it stays more or less the same. Now, before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and follow me on Twitter. I'm constantly putting out some tweets to help you guys put out the best fantasy lineup you can and try to help you guys win every single week. Let's get started now and let's jump into the schedule for week 12. All right, so week 12 starts on January 3rd. So happy new year, guys. I hope you have a happy and healthy new year. I hope it goes great for you. And let's get started. So as you can see here, guys, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, there are basically no games. Monday, there's two games. Wednesday, there's three. Friday, there's two. And Sunday, there's one single game. So obviously, if you're able to max out the amount of players you have on those days, you'll probably win your week, right? Because Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday are really, really busy days. And therefore, you'll probably have a pretty overflowing lineup on at least Thursday and Saturday. So you definitely want to be able to have guys that play on those off nights and have less guys playing on your bench. Now, a couple things to note. The Montreal Canadiens play not a single game this week. So if you own any Habs players other than maybe Nick Suzuki, you can probably consider dropping them because they're really going to be completely useless for you this week because they don't play a game. And then the Buffalo Sabres only play one game this week, and that's on Thursday, which is a really busy night. So you can consider dropping most of your Buffalo Sabres as well. I'd probably hold on to Darlene, Alex Tuck, and Pekka Lukanen, but that's about it. The weird thing about this week is that there are no teams that play more than three games. There are a good amount of teams that play two, and then the rest of the teams play three. So there's no team with like a hugely favorable schedule in terms of games played. Now, there are a couple teams with very favorable schedules in terms of off nights, though. The first team that you really need to pay attention to this week is the St. Louis Blues. Like I showed you before, guys, there's pretty much no games Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. St. Louis, though, plays Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday on three out of those four off nights, which is absolutely incredible. And therefore, you do have to stock up on St. Louis Blues this week. The Edmonton Oilers is another team that plays on two of those off nights. They play Monday and Wednesday. So if you can pick up a guy like a Kyler Yamamoto for Monday and Wednesday, that's definitely going to be helping you since you're going to be able to fit him in your lineup. Jumping into some forward options now, and first on the list is Mikael Granlin of the Nashville Predators, 57% owned, and Nashville is healthy again. Duchesne's back, Forsberg's back. Everyone is back now, and Granlin has honestly been great all year round, and he should definitely be owning a lot more than 57% of leaks. Then have Carter Verhage and Anthony Duclair of the Florida Panthers, both when the team is healthy, play on the line with Barkov. Even when the team isn't healthy, Bennett was out. Duclair played on the line with Huberto and absolutely shined. So both these players should really be owned in a lot more than 50% of leagues. Add these guys while you can. Then I have Braden Shen of the St. Louis Blues. And as of this recording, he's injured, but he should be back for next week. And therefore, he makes a really good add because, like I said, guys, St. Louis has an insanely favorable schedule. And if you're able to max out your games on those off nights, you're likely to win the week. So Braden Shannon makes for a very good ad. Then I have Valeri Nichushkin of the Colorado Avalanche, and he has been fantastic this year. The only reason he's not higher owned is because Colorado hasn't played a game in a long time. Other than Boston, Colorado has played the least amount of games in the NHL tied with the New York Islanders. So that's a, a team that I want to be targeting right now, and Valeri Nichushkin has been very good on that second line with Kadri and with Burakovsky. Next, I have Alex Yafalo of the Los Angeles Kings. And what's the one thing I always say about Yafalo? Ride him while he's hot. Yafalo is hot right now. He's doing very well since before the Christmas break. And right now, as of this recording, he's playing on the top line with Kopitar. So it's a good place to be. He's getting top power play time at the moment right now, too, which is great. So Yafalo is definitely someone I want to be owning right now. And even if he no longer gets top line or top power play time, I'll still consider streaming him as long as he's hot. 
Then I have Clayton Keller of the Arizona Coyotes, and he's been unreal for the past few weeks now. He's only 32% owned, but that's only because he's on a terrible team, the Arizona Coyotes. But Keller has been very consistent, been putting up points basically every single game. Definitely should be added in more leagues. Next is Nino Niederreiter of the Carolina Hurricanes, and he's owned in 31% of leagues. Playing on the top line with Sebastian Ajo, which is an incredible place to be, and therefore should be picked up in a few more leagues. Next is Alex Tuck of the Buffalo Sabres, and I know I told you guys that Buffalo has a terrible, terrible schedule this week with only one game. But Alex Tuck is someone that you definitely want to keep your eye on. If you're in a really deep league and he's not picked up yet, you might want to consider doing so. If you're in a shallower league, just keep your eye on him and pick him up maybe after this week because Buffalo's schedule is just really bad this week. But keep an eye on him for sure. Then I have Robert Thomas of the St. Louis Blues, 24% owned. And like I said, guys, St. Louis has an amazing schedule this week. And Robert Thomas is probably the best player available in a lot of leagues because he's only 24% owned. And he's probably going to center the second or third line in St. Louis, depending on injuries and what it looks like at that point. But Thomas is definitely a really good ad for those three off nights on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Next is Brandon Saad of the St. Louis Blues. And he's playing on the top line with Ryan O'Reilly and David Perron. That's an amazing place to be. And with Perron back, Saad should definitely start putting up a good amount of points. And you definitely want to be streaming him for those off nights, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Then I have Capo Caco of the New York Rangers, and he gets the off-night game on Monday, and he continues to play with Sabinajad and Chris Kreider on that top line. So definitely someone who's not the best option in the world because he's not necessarily producing that much, but definitely has the opportunity to produce a nice amount. Next is my Manscaped must-add player of the video, Paul Stastny. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word FANTASYTIP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word FANTASYTIP. Unlock your confidence, guys, and always use the right tool for the job with Manscaped. Now, Paul Stastny, why is he my Manscaped must add of the video? Well, Paul Stastny is now skating on the top line with Mark Scheifele and Nikolai Ehlers. That's a very good place to be. If you're Paul Stastny, you could definitely put up a lot of points there. He also gets second power play time, which doesn't hurt. Paul Stastny could definitely be a diamond in the rough for the next few weeks, at least until Blake Wheeler returns from injury. Next, I have Lawson Krause of the Arizona Coyotes playing on their second line with Bill Kessel. Second power play as well. Not necessarily the best in terms of power play deployment, but Krause has been really good all year, especially in hitting leagues. He dishes out a lot of hits. He shoots the puck a decent amount, and this year specifically, he's actually been able to put up some points, a, a pretty decent amount of points. So he could definitely be owned in a lot more than 7% of leagues. Then I have Tanner Pearson of the Vancouver Canucks currently playing on their top line, and the dude's on a tear right now. And as long as he's hot, he's definitely someone that I'm considering adding to my team. Then I have Nick Schmaltz of the Arizona Coyotes, and I like him because he's playing on a line with Clayton Keller, and he's also now getting top power play deployment, which I like. Obviously not my favorite option in the world, but if you're in a really deep league and he's available, he can definitely get you some points. Next is Kyler Yamamoto of the Edmonton Oilers, and he's the guy you want to add for those Monday and Wednesday off nights, because in all likelihood he's available in your league, and he does play with Leon Dreisaitl and Ryan Nugent Hopkins on that second line, so the opportunity is definitely there for him to put up some points, so he's definitely a good add for those off nights. Then I have Alex Barabana of the San Jose Sharks, and I like him a lot as well. He's playing on line with Hurdle, and he's getting a decent amount of power play time, and he's been producing a lot lately. So for someone that's 3% owned, available in 97% of leagues, that's a pretty good value right there. Then I have JJ Paterka of the Buffalo Sabres, and he's a really good prospect. I've always really liked this guy, and he's getting an opportunity right now on Buffalo's top line and on their top power play. It's an amazing place to be for Paterka, and I don't love the Sabres players for this week specifically. They only play one game. So if you can wait to pick up Paterka, if you don't think anybody else is going to pick him up, I probably would wait until the end of the week, but definitely keep an eye on this guy because he has a really good opportunity right now. And last but not least, I have Henrik Borgstrom of the Chicago Blackhawks, 0% owned. So if you're in a really deep league, this is someone you can really consider picking up because Borgstrom is on a line with Patrick Kane and Alex Dabrinkit. And yeah, it's a pretty good place to be. Let's see how he does. Jumping into some defense options now. And number one on the list, I have Evan Bouchard of the Edmonton Oilers. And he's been having himself a really nice season, putting up points, putting up some decent peripherals. Someone that I like having on my team. 
And he's good to add for those Monday and Wednesday off nights as well. Gonna have Alex Golgowski of the Minnesota Wild. And he's been really good this year. Kind of out of nowhere, he's putting up a lot of points. And until that cools down, Golgowski is someone that I like to have on my team. Then have Colton Pareko, good for those St. Louis off nights on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Because the dude puts up a lot of peripherals. He's good at blocking and hitting. And he'll put up a point every once in a while as well. Next is Shane Gossier of the Arizona Coyotes, 37% owned. And he's been having a really nice season. He gets top power play deployment. And he's managed to put up 20 points in 30 games, which is absolutely fantastic for a defenseman. So he should definitely be owned in more than 37% of leagues. Then I have Rasmus Anderson with Calgary Flames. He gets to play top power play on Calgary. Calgary hasn't played in a while. That's why Anderson got dropped in a lot of leagues. But he still does have that top power play deployment and therefore has a really good opportunity every single night to put up points. And I have Nate Schmidt of the Winnipeg Jets. He gets second power play deployment on Winnipeg, and second power play on Winnipeg actually gets to play a good amount. So Nate Schmidt does have a decent opportunity there to put up points. Obviously not the best player in the world to add, but if you do need someone who could potentially put up points, he's someone who can do that. Doesn't put up too much for peripherals, though. Then I have Eric Johnson of the Colorado Avalanche, and Johnson is someone who's also great for peripherals hitting and blocking. He's been putting up points so far this season, but I'm not sure that's super sustainable. I think those points will go down. He's not a guy like Samuel Girard or Devin Taves that does get second power play time. He'll only get that power play time if there was a lot of injuries on the defense. So that's not really going to happen for Eric Johnson, but he's definitely someone who could put up a safe floor every single night with peripherals. Then I have Nikola Hag of the Vegas Golden Knights. He's been getting some PP2 time lately, but I'm not sure that's going to continue for too much longer. As soon as Pietro Angelo comes back, He's not really going to get that power play two-time anymore, but he's someone who puts up a pretty decent floor every night with a decent amount of peripherals, and he does manage to put up a good amount of five-on-five five points as well. Then I have Matt Roy, a guy who I've been suggesting for quite a few weeks now, and he's a guy who puts up a very safe floor as well. He shoots, he blocks, he hits a little bit, which is really nice, and he's been able to put up points almost all year round, point every two or three games, which is pretty good for a guy giving you a safe floor night in and night out. And I have Tyler Myers of the Vancouver Canucks. He doesn't see any power play time at all, but he's another guy who's been hitting and blocking a nice amount, so we'll give you that safe floor. Then I have Noah Dobson of the New York Islanders, 18% on only, and this guy has to be added right now. He could be another must-add of the video for me right now because this dude is breaking out, playing top power play on the Islanders. Islanders seem to be turning things around a little bit now, and Dobson is a big reason for that. Add him while you still can. And that Alexandre Carrier of the National Predators and Roman Yossi is currently on COVID protocol, so Carrier is getting top power play time. And even when Yossi comes back, he's a guy who's been given a pretty decent role this year and has been given second power play time. He's a guy who you can definitely consider adding in super deep leagues where defense are hard to find. Jumping into goalies now, first on the list is Jeremy Swayman of the Boston Bruins, 54% owned, getting about half the starts in Boston. They're a really good team, and they've played less games than any other team in the league, so Swayman definitely has a lot of starts ahead of him. Then I have Ottinger and Holtby, who are splitting the starts in Dallas. Obviously, it sucks to only have one of these two guys. If you have both these guys, it's probably a pretty good situation to be in because you have all the starts in Dallas. And then I have Jake Allen of the Montreal Canadiens. Not a great, not a great streamer here, but Jake Allen is someone that is going to get all the starts in Montreal as long as he's healthy until Carey Price comes back. So if you're desperate for a goalie, Jake Allen at least is getting those starts. More for point-based leagues, though. Not useful in categories leagues. Next is Uko Pekka of the Buffalo Sabres. 27% owned, and he's been pretty good ever since taking over the crease in Buffalo due to all those injuries. And Tokarski has come back from COVID less now, though. So he could potentially steal the crease back from Uko Pekka but I'm not too worried as of right now because Lukanen has been playing very well. So as of right now, he's still the starter in Buffalo in my eyes. Next is Pavel Francouz of the Colorado Avalanche, 16% owned, and Colorado hasn't played in a while, but Kemper overall this season has not been that great. So if Kemper comes back and has a poor performance, they may elect to start Pavel Francouz. If he has a really good performance, he could potentially take over, not necessarily as a starter, but maybe a 50-50 split, right? So it's something that you should keep your eye on here if Kemper continues to struggle this year. Next is Anton Forsberg of the Ottawa Senators, and he is the starter right now in Ottawa. He's been playing very, very well. Ottawa as a whole has been playing a lot better, and he's on the COVID protocol right now. So as long as he's there, Matt Murray will be given a shot to play some games, but that shouldn't last too long. And I think Forsberg is the guy, unless Murray goes out and just has an absolutely phenomenal performance. Then I have Dustin Tokarski, who I already mentioned, could potentially take over the crease 
in Buffalo, only 3% owned. So it might be worth the gamble if you're in a really deep league and you're desperate for a goalie. Then I have Karel Vimelka of the Arizona Coyotes and Wedgwood, the other goalie in Arizona, really did not look good the other night. Let in seven goals and lost 8-7 in a shootout. Really not great. So Vimelka will get the opportunity to start on Sunday. And if he looks good, he will be the starter probably for the next game or two as well. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I hope you guys all have a healthy and happy new year. And I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tips.